wanted to let you know that what you've heard is true. I did sign the 501c documents this week. I have been opposed to Occupy New Hampshire seeking formal status from the beginning. But when I saw the papers and knew that they were going to seek status with or without me, I felt that it was better that I sign my name. I had hoped that I could be an agent of reconciliation on the board of directors, and I signed with the explicit agreement that Mark Provo would step down as soon as possible. It was also my hope that Mark and his resignation would already have gone through before we came public with the news. That did not happen. I think I was very naive a week ago. I will be stepping down from the board. When Mark and I step down, there will be two spaces available on the board of directors. I also want to say that it's been an honor and a privilege to work with everyone who's here and everyone who is not here. And I'm still available for direct actions. <laughs> but I'm done with Occupy. Any group that I participate in, I feel that it is not up to us to ask for someone to have a resume to join us. It is up to them to look at our resume to see if we're worth joining. And I think until any organization can do that, you know, what have we got? Um, I'm going to continue to show up when I can. I'm going to be a part of when I can. I have a lot of things in my life that I do that advocate for people. Um, I just feel that, I feel that maybe we've had it backwards for a while and that if we start looking at the fact that we're applying for someone else's acceptance and that we're not looking to accept them, then maybe if we get that going, it's going to work a little better for us. And it just feels that way for me. So that's what I got. Thanks. Matthew? Um, I want to save my, myself for the end. For the end? Okay. <laughs> Charles, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Good. Heather? 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 Thank you. Mark? Good. Ann? Um, I'm sort of the middle person last week. <laughs> I was protesting the idea that you cannot split a whole into any parts. We already had that with our little subgroups. And quite frankly, that's just a, to try and say we are officially doing that, as far as I'm concerned, is mirroring the bipartisan politics, which got us exactly where we are right now. So I personally cannot take part in anything that's going to mirror or make us become exactly what we're fighting. That's it. I'm here as a stand against uh, any force being used anywhere. And, uh, you know, basically, I believe in peace. I believe in dialogue. I believe in, in voluntary action. And, uh, you know, I, I, it was very, very disappointing last week when, uh, when they split off. Uh, there was no, no interaction, no discussion. Uh, uh, I am technically not Free State Project. I'm a 20-year resident of New Hampshire. I actually wasn't open carrying or, or armed at all, except for a very small pocket knife. Uh, last week, and uh, and I, you know, like uh, like a bunch of others, got uh, uh, lumped in with uh, with uh, you know uh, uh, a nature that I don't even think that the people who were carrying guns have. You know, I you know we're not uh, doing things like that because we're trying to be divisive, or you know, we're 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 making a stand about something. I'm Chris Dornan of Concord. I came to, got involved in this group a few months back. Yeah, well, 
Blue Blues is hard for everybody here. Bob Bundy got me involved and I've come to three or four of the meetings. Uh, I had tried to answer some website emails and they all, I got about 30 uh, in an inability to deliver messages back. And I was afraid the group had kind of gotten hacked into or something. Uh, there was an effort in this in February by uh, Americans for Prosperity to take over the brand of this organization. Uh, Jennifer Horn and Kevin Smith and uh, Ovid La Montaigne were going to be at an Occupy New Hampshire jobs rally in Nashville that got snowed out. Uh, the group had to make a stand. It can't tolerate anybody coming in because American for Prosperity is diametrically opposed to everything we believe in. There's groundswell of national protest that's powerful, that I want to be part of, uh, that has grassroots movement to it, but it does have to start to focus on what it is. It can't be everything to all people. Uh, we have a, a turning point in a crisis here to decide if there is strong middle ground between free straighters, libertarians, and I will call us in the best uh, sense of the word, sort of consensus building, patient, amorphous liberals. Uh, I don't know what the common ground is there, except in Seth Cohen, I see somebody who stands for half the things I strongly believe in. But if there's anybody who can make that stand on both sides, it's him. He's a good man. And I'll, I'm here just because he's kind of cool. <laughs> Good job, Seth. Can <laughs> I direct response to that? I, thank, thank you, Chris. Um, uh, he introduced me, Seth Cohen. Um, I actually, I, I do disagree with you. I think that Americans for Prosperity, and I'm not defending the Koch brothers and what they've done with their money. I, there are things that I think people can agree with. There are things I think they don't. I think the part of exclusion is we have to look at everybody's viewpoint. I think it's about discussion. Um, there are votes I took, you know, in that building that I know people disagree with, but there are people who've never talked to me about those votes that don't understand why I took them. I would love to have those conversations, and yet people made assumptions about it. I saw that same thing happening. I couldn't be here last week, and there was a part of me who was glad I couldn't be here because I knew I wouldn't have been able to change it. So there was a part of that was freeing to not have been here because I didn't feel like, oh, if only I'd been there. But. What I will say is that I'm thrilled by the inclusion of everybody. I think that that's the strength. That's the strength that's been from the beginning of the Occupy movement. It happened in Manchester. It happens through the process of consensus. It happens through bringing opposites together. You know, there's the idea of synthesis, and, and that brings these opposition points together and creates something new. And that, I think, is part of our problem. We have people that are so polarized and they stop talking. And yes, so there are times I can go ahead and I can, you know, I work with Chris and there are things we absolutely agree on and there are things we disagree on and that discussion is the biggest part of why we're doing this. It's about the discussion. It's not about stomping off. It's about coming together and saying the political discourse doesn't exist in this country. Let's start having it. I no longer have a need for a direct response, really. Okay. Seth said it all. <laughs> yeah, I'm a friend of uh, Seth's. Uh, he's my state rep. Okay. Joe Haas is my name. Joe Haas? And, and Arnie was mentioned earlier. Was that Arnie? Uh, Albert. Albert. Yes, yeah. Albert. Not, in, not Arnie Arneson. No, I, I'm the uh, janitor of that building. If anybody wants to go in there to use the facilities, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing I wanted to say was uh, I did uh, contact uh, somebody in the uh, Manchester Occupy movement uh, a few months ago. And what I'd like to see is uh, the, well, well I, I, I would really like to, I guess uh, as a subsection under the uh, audit the Fed, uh, I don't like the banks. And I like credit unions a lot better. And I want to make sure that people that are working have the choice. There's an RSA, 275 41, that gives people options 
of a uh, lawful money, check, direct deposit, or some employee card. And I was talking with one of the uh, state employees at the library the other day, and she told me that the governor has told her and the state employees union they have to take the direct deposit. They cannot use any of the other options. So here we have a dictator uh, going against the statutes, which is actually in contempt of court, contempt of the general court, and somebody like Seth could put a bill in for... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he wants to get out of it. He, uh, he's, he's retiring. <laughs> but I, I hope to get a new uh, state rep that is as good as Seth was. Uh, point of clarification. Um, in, in response to what he said about the uh, requirement that state employees uh, have to receive direct deposit um, or uh, uh, some other forms. There are, there is a small group of state employees who have protested that successfully and can uh, get regular checks in the mail. Good. Uh, Excellent. Cool. Matthew. Uh, I'm Matthew Hunt. I'm a uh, free stater. Day of Rage is, is actually, if, if you guys Google a U.S. Day of Rage, it's one citizen, one dollar, one vote. That's what Occupy was started about. Those are the people that started Occupy in New York. Um, well, you know, the whole worldwide solidarity started in Madrid, Spain, but, but Occupy was started with the group the U.S. Day of Rage. Google it and you'll find out what that's about. And that, that's about getting the money out of politics. So that includes, you know, the banks having too much influence, but but really, the U.S. Day of Rage, Google that and you'll find out a little bit more about what Occupy was started about. I, I thought it was started by Adbusters, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it? Adbusters got in touch with There's U.S. Day of Rage and okay. all got together six months to okay. Occupy. Hello. I got here late. I'm not entirely sure of everything. Uh, my name is Hannah. I guess I'm what you can call a pre-stater. I was born and raised as a libertarian in the state. Uh, I just got back after four years of college, and I'm here because Seth told regular uh, Concord Monitor commenters to show up, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Carlton. I've been following Occupy on Facebook and stuff for a while. This is actually my first GN. Welcome. Oh, yeah. here. I'm uh, Will Hopkins. I'm the director of New Hampshire Peace Action, a member of Iraq Veterans Against the War. Uh, and a, uh, a former national board member of Veterans for Peace. Um, it's one of the folks in that initial meeting of Occupy NH. Um, and I have prepared remarks for today. Um, they'd probably take me a little more than two minutes to read, but not much more. Um, I don't think the people they were intended for showed up to this particular GA. Um, <laughs> Wait, I'm not sure with, so, which way I should go on that one. Um, and so I, I, I'm not sure if, if it's worth my time to, to read them. Um, however, Garrett's got a camera, um, and if they can get online, maybe some, somebody will see them. So I'd like a temperature check before I just launch off on a tirade. I like to do 
I'd like to hear it. Alright. Like like right. <laughs> All right. Um, when I when I talk to people anywhere in this country, I, I see a set of common values. A belief that all Americans have a right to pursue the American dream, which by my understanding is nothing more than the right to work hard, earn a living wage, keep food on the table, bring your kids to the doctor when they're sick, perhaps own a home, maybe retire when you've grown old enough that you can't work anymore. People are sick of war. Uh, it's not that we Americans are a peaceful people, I'd say far from it, um, but people only want to go to war to defend this country. Americans by and large recognize that all of the wars and conflicts, big and small, that we're engaged in are about enriching the interests that have invested heavily in electoral politics. Americans have come to recognize that our Congress, Senate, and Commander-in-Chief are not working for us, but rather working to stifle anything that challenges the interests that fund ele elections. We've come together here to occupy an opposition to the corporate state, crony capitalism, and a game that's been rigged against common people. We let the same interests who pick our politicians, make the news, write the story of our country, and let us hear only the narrative approved. They've manufactured a world where the left is MSNBC and the right is Fox News. And if you think the bailouts were theft, you must be crazy. If you think endless war is not moral or just, or that money and not freedom and democracy are what dictate our foreign policy, well, you must be crazy. If you think anything, that hurts the folks who fill the politicians' election coffers or damages those megacorps that control our media or threatens their cozy, dual-lobed corporate party and the piles of wealth, power, and privilege it brings to those who, have dubbed, who we have dubbed the 1%. They must be crazy. Then came Occupy, which is kind of this universal recognition of what the beast is. And here in New Hampshire, thanks to the Free State Party, it's a movement that's crossed party lines and ideology to fight that system. For the first time in my short life, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe someday we can gain the power to challenge the system. Maybe change it, maybe even tear it down and build something better together. I don't put a lot of credence in Rand or Rothbard. I'd say Marx is probably my favorite economist. Um, but what I recognize here is that people who share my outlook on this system and have the will to change it are few and far between. Most people are content to eat their Big Mac and work at the Gap as long as they make it home in time to keep up with the Kardashians. As long as our opponents in this struggle control the media, they control the story. As long as they control the police, local, county, fed, federal, secret, and public police. As long as they control the military, they control an absolute monopoly on violence. And we who understand how this system works and dream of justice, whatever that means to each of us, are few and have little power against all that light and sound and all those guns and all that money. What I'm trying to say is this, the American dream has been destroyed. There is no more upward mobility because the haves make the rules and the have-nots have no say. I killed people in Iraq, people who were just trying to defend their homeland from foreign invaders. I have a lifetime worth of penance to pay. I intend to pay it fighting the corporate state. I, in I intend to fight as long and as hard as I can. I don't think any of us can afford to exile, schism, or expel anyone who challenges that beast. I've made a personal and absolute commitment to nonviolence. But figur figuratively speaking, we have a long war ahead of us. And we are desperately outmanned, outgunned, and outfinanced. As far as I'm concerned, we need every blade we can call up. And we're still hopeless underdogs. I'm a raging, ble ble bleeding heart liberal. Uh, but I love those members of the FSP who have had the courage to come amongst us and try to work together to shake this system. I know there is hurt from the schisms, but if any of you will still stand with me and with us, I believe we can be an example to the rest of the country and the rest of the world, if indeed the 99% can be awakened. Then maybe we have a chance to challenge the corporate state. For surely, if we cannot accept that other people in this movement hold other viewpoints, we don't stand a chance. I'm, this is my first GA and I've been kind of watching from the sidelines and then commenting about the meeting last week and what has happened. Uh, I like the wording that says there was a breach of the consensus process because I think the consensus process is the thing that's really beautiful about what's going on here. So, however, someone has entered into the legal process, you know, trying to register 
the brand, the name, as a, a corporate entity. And what I think would be a quick and easy solution, and I don't know if this is the right place for a proposal, would be to deliver a letter with a lot of signatures to the Secretary of State to say that there's a, a letter of protest, to say that there's a dispute about the use of the name and that we hope to resolve it soon. Uh, I think that uh, people in the bureaus treat uh, a letter of protest as a, something that has legal meaning and um, I think you might describe what did happen and that, that the meetings are normally a consensus and that, uh, that we, if I can be included, essentially don't, um, gosh it's so hard to not be a control freak about this because the name does mean something and you know down the road there could be other disputes about two people using the same group name. So anyway, that my proposal, when it's appropriate, would be to deliver a letter of protest to the Secretary of State to reserve the name and to have them put in abeyance the granting of a corporate charter to anybody. Should we um, put that on the agenda and well, then discuss it when we... Seth has it. Then I, it's it's going to be very quick because I, I did talk to the Secretary of State about that. There is no process for that. The only way to fight it would be to take it to court. A letter so, of protest kind of puts it on record. Puts a puts a document that's timely in the file. Um, so yeah, I know there's no process. I just know in my dealings with the city clerk in Nashua, that when she got a letter of protest stating a reason, she didn't know what to do, so she threw up her hands and stopped. So she just didn't do anything else with the <laughs> process that had started, and that could be the possible outcome with Gardner. You know, could we use our I gotta get that. Well, you, you don't really want to end up in court. Hopefully, it would kind of force a reconciliation to resolve it. I mean, if we're if we're going to discuss this, yeah, then it should go on the agenda, and we right. should come back yeah. to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to give everyone their two minutes. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Nick. Um, this is also my first GA, and I'm very excited to be here. Um, I've gone to um, Boston, uh, and I went to. Um, the Chicago trip with a few occupiers including Mark and uh, a few other people and that was a lot of fun um, I'm mostly here just to to learn what the what the kind of uh, environment is here at the Occupy uh, the Occupy New Hampshire group and what I can do to help out uh, and what uh, we can all do to fight the corporate state um, I uh, the first thing that I saw when I saw the whole gun debate, it really seemed inane to me. And I, I didn't even know about it, so maybe that speaks to how inane it is. Uh, <laughs> and pretty early on, I realized it, it pretty much looked like a power grab kind of tactic. Um, and I know a few others clearly feel like that, too. Um, so I, I'm really here just to learn and, and just ask questions and, and see uh, what's going on and how I can help. Um, and... Uh, I really don't think that the schism was a good thing or was necessary, and I'd rather there just be one group instead of two groups or compromise between two groups. Um, and that's all I have really have to say. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? I'm Don Converse. I'm just busy. Okay. okay. Uh, Do you have anything to say? I'm Tim from Kent. I, I was no, starting with the oh, gentleman. Hey, don't let me interrupt. Let him go ahead. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, Tim from Canterbury. I'm not sure if I'm actually here or not either. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I'm basically hoping that people that I agree with 30% on, people that I agree with 80% on, uh, it would be nice if they could actually uh, we'll stay together to work on things they all agree on. Thank you. And, and, and apparently Tim also. And me, yes. I listen to what what y'all say, and it's like I before Occupy was ever even a movement, 60s, 70s. I've been assisting in a lot of different ways. We all have the ability to do things to help change the system in our own ways. I was in the legal profession for 30 years, you know, licensed in the state, and I think it's, it's it's those of us who can bring up those things together that we know that we can do to change. Things. We all have different abilities, but we all need to stay united. We have to stay together. And I've listened to the other the previous debates. I've seen some of the arguments. You know, I'm a, I'm a Vietnam era veteran myself. You know, I'm also care. I also 
I'm not carrying a gun, no. But yes, I'm a gun owner too. You know, revolutions weren't fought by blowing kisses. But yet at the same time, we need to discuss with people what these issues are. I'm hoping maybe some of you want some of the talent that I know how to do to bring out some of what's been done in this state about corruption, police misconduct, things that happen. Even here is a poster. The United States has the highest incarceration rate of any country in the nation. We are enforcing our policies in foreign countries. I also have it broken down to which states are even worse as far as their incarceration rates go. Luckily, New, New Hampshire is live free or die. But that's slowly diminishing, and it's up to us to do something about it. So all I can really say is just, if you need some help, let me know. Thank you. I'm there to help. Thank you. I have a soft voice. So, um, my name is Anne Marie Timmons, and I'm from the Concord Monitor, and I'm here covering this event today. Um, and so, I want, I've never been to a GA, so I'm learning about what it's like and want to get down your concerns and your hopes for going forward. I'm glad, I'm glad you weren't banned from this uh, <laughs> similar to events that happen inside the building. <laughs> I'm Leah, and I want to tell you how sorry I am to have been at the center of the controversy that has caused so many people so much pain. People that I counted as friends um, on both sides of that park last week, I know have suffered a lot over the last week. Um, I would be glad to explain to you why I was carrying a gun. I was. I'm not a free stater. I've lived in New Hampshire for 24 years. Um, I don't know if it even matters anymore. I could give you my rationale. I heard some people say some things already that touched upon why I feel it's necessary to defend our rights, all of them. Um, it, what happened two days ago in that um, movie theater, I would point to as a reason why I think an armed population is in the interest of all law-abiding citizens. Yes. I think that it might not have turned out the way it did if people could have protected themselves there. But that Aside, that issue aside, I've been involved in the Occupy New Hampshire since the beginning. I was in the courthouse six weeks ago. I await the judge's ruling. I have hope that he's taking so long because he's going to rule on our side. And I'd like to see us be together in the park again with our tents. And I honestly believe and have all along that New Hampshire has the best chance of affecting change against this system because we have activists from such a broad range, range of the spectrum that are willing to work together to find common ground. Five things that everybody would work on together here could do more good than everything we disagree on. And um, again, it is uh, really um, sincere that I'm sorry that I hurt so many people. It's not your fault. You didn't hurt anybody. It wasn't you, Leah. Yeah. They hurt themselves. You didn't hurt anybody. I, I was part of the problem, too, if that's if you're going to go by that. But I, I hope you don't feel responsible. I don't think that it... That well, I do, and I feel like yeah. I blundered. Give you a hug. <laughs> that's right. We're going to repeat that no. first hug and that first GA. <laughs> <laughs> You were sticking up for rights. Nobody blames you. Okay. So, for me, 
I think the powerful message is, along with our rights, which I'm a gun owner, I support our rights, our, our responsibility to show concern for one another. And thank you, we thank you for the stand you take took in terms of being willing to stand for what you believe so strongly in. And thank you for both of you for coming to a place where you're willing to stand and respect the things that matter to the whole group. Hi, I'm Lisa. This is uh, my first General Assembly. I was kind of watching um, the things play out online last week with the whole gun debate and stuff. And uh, it, it really bothered me because I did think that this was an inclusive group and I did not like seeing the, you know, look at you have a gun, then you're not welcome and you have to sign a paper and blah, blah, blah. I, I just really didn't agree with that. Um, I, I'm, I was a gun owner, but it got stolen, which is whatever, another story. Uh, but um, I, I do respect the Second Amendment, but I, I can think back to um, going into Murphy's tap room probably like five or six years ago and the free staters were there and they were open carrying and I was like, oh my God, that guy has a gun and it like freaked me out. And over the course of me becoming more aware of things, I realized that if something were to happen like what happened two days ago, which Leah referred to, that's the first guy I would want to get behind. And I've come to respect that and I, I just would like to see people I don't know, come to that. I mean, it takes your own getting there. You can't force someone to feel that way. But I would like to see this group um, not push aside the people who want to, you know, express their Second Amendment right, because that person could maybe save your life someday. And just a, a, let them show that they're just, you know, expressing their rights. And it's not to take away from your right, it's just an expression of their rights, and that's it. Just a uh, correct response. Uh, I think that that you know, process that you went through is part of the reason that those of us that open carry actually do that, choose to do that over concealed carry, because, you know, okay, you have your, your first reaction, and then you're around people, and they seem normal, and you talk to them, and, you know, they're not pulling it out and pointing it at you or anything like that. I've never heard of a shooting you know, at this and, 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 and uh, you know, well, normal is a very <laughs> subjective term. But anyways, I, the, you know, I, I honor you uh, for bringing that up and, and saying that because that's, uh, uh, like I say, it's part of the reason that, that I open carry rather than conceal. we got a few more. Hi. Um, I'm here because I want the voice of unity to be louder than the voice of division. And I um, don't pick any label here, be a liberal or libertarian or right or any of that. The label I pick here is just the 99% label. Um, Speak up a little, David. Yeah, and um, so for me, the focus is on on that, you know, and it's not on guns or anything else. Um, I uh, that's it for me, I guess. Thank you. Hey, I'm Vinny. Um, I just want to point out that. One of the most important ideas in all of philosophy is the law of non-contradiction. You cannot be and not be the same thing. You cannot be the 99% and not be the 99%. You can't claim to be the 99% and then exclude a group which is pretty close to 1% of the population. Not that free staters are necessarily one percenters in, the, in terms of wealth. <laughs> Certainly not myself. Um, so I, I just think that anybody who tries to continue claiming to be the 99% while excluding a huge group of the New Hampshire population is ridiculous and, oh, yeah. Mind if I do a direct response to that? Um, the, the rationale that I was explained was that people who are excluded were still part of the 
you just couldn't take part in Occupy. <laughs> <laughs> just so everyone understands exactly the rationale that was being used that to explain <laughs> how that works. We're going to represent you whether you like it or not. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that piece of uh, I'm Ian Freeman. I am from the Keene area. I'm one of the bloggers at freekeen.com. And I've been involved in Occupy Keen since the very beginning of Occupy Keen. Um, we've never had issues like that, uh, like you guys have experienced out in Keene. Everybody's always gotten along pretty well. Uh, the reason why I got involved was because I've been a, a lifelong activist and I want to do activism. That's why I moved to New Hampshire. I'm a Free State Project uh, participant. And the occupier seemed like activists, so I wanted to get involved and, and listen and, uh, and hear what their issues were. And, uh, see if there was a way that I could be of assistance and uh, everything's been great out in Keene and so when I saw what was happening here it was just so ridiculous I, uh, you know, I wanted to be here to see what was going to happen next and see if I could be of assistance in some way. Um, I'm Will Kostrick and uh, I was also um, occupied in, in, the, uh, in the early days um, was at the park and, and was um, was involved. I haven't been too involved as of late, but started uh, getting back in. Um, as far as moving forward goes, someone posted something online that uh, that really um, caught my eye this week, and it was about tolerance. And <clears throat> tolerance is putting up with something that makes you uncomfortable. That's what it means to tolerate. If it's something that you agree with or something that you don't mind, then that's not tolerating it. That's, that's, that's just agreement. That's just everyday life. The entire, the entire word tolerance means that it's outside of your comfort zone. And that's what we have to do is, is step beyond our comfort zones um, because otherwise you know, the, the cliques continue to form and, and as people have mentioned before, the whole two-party thing is, is how we got here by, by, you know, those Catholics, those Republicans, those Democrats, those Jews. You know, if you're just gonna write off entire groups of people, then how is that different from anything that uh, everyone has always done? Uh, so when I'm here, um, I'm pretty much not interested in debating or discussing anything that uh, I happen to disagree with with anyone here. Um, I'm interested in what we can work together on. And I think the purpose coming together, I think this whole thing started because people lost sight of the fact that, in, in my opinion, Occupy was how we can come together to figure out what we can do together to make a change. And at no point could it ever be about us coming together to tell other people or each other what not to do. At the point that you come and say, well, you know, let's all tell this guy what not to do, then you're, you're no longer, it's a completely different uh, road that you're going down than saying, let's find out what we can agree to do together. That's positive. Um, I'm Teresa and uh, I'm, been part of Occupy since um, Occupy. Before, I, I helped start Occupy Boston, so I've been here since the beginning. Um, I would say that the thing that I've the lesson for this week is that we are all a voice of Occupy. None of us are the voice for Occupy. And um, what we saw this week is is people who really believe that they that their answers are the answers, and that we should. I don't know just subjugate ourselves to what their will is and, and I refuse to do that um, and I I really just want to take um, last week is a lesson in how in in what I've said is going to be the hardest part of Occupy since the beginning which is that the hardest part of Occupy isn't necessarily what we're trying to do with our government or any of that stuff that's all really hard stuff and and what this gentleman from the Veterans for Peace read was right on However, the hardest part of Occupy is learning how to talk to people that you disagree with at your core and still work together with them for progress. And that is what we need to do. And if anything spelled that out really clearly, it was this, the events of last week. I, I 
am glad that I was banned from the page. It gave me a very nice break from what has been a very stressful thing for me. And it also gave me some, some ability to let go of some things that, that I couldn't control. And so, and it also started this conversation. So I'm glad that all that last week happened. I'm upset that it happened, but I'm glad that it happened. I know you can't have two things that are different be the same, but I sort of do. <laughs> it's just, I, I feel conflicted about it, but I feel like overall, this is a good opportunity for us to reconnect, figure out what things we can work on together and get that work done. Because we have a lot to do. And that's all I have to say. Um, I'm Christopher. I, I, I guess I have a long background in nonviolent direct action and and I I would like to see two different types of events you know one where people are expected to be open caring if they want to and then other events that are known ahead of time to to be nonviolent events where there will not be any any weapons you know one of the one of the lines of the nonviolent code is I will not bring or I will not bring or use any weapons two different types of and they're fine. They're both fine. Is that everyone? Oh. Well, no. Hello. Did you? Yeah. Oh. Hi, I'm Andrea with the Concord Monitor, also a photographer. So I was at one of the initial meetings at White Park, so it's been interesting to see how far you've come since then. It's a good day at the office. How far have we come? Yeah. We're yeah. newsworthy. <laughs> some people look like they've got some sun, you know, like. <laughs> Way different than January. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Cecilia? I'm Diane Sirocco. Um, I have been a part of Occupy since January. Um, however, um, I was working with Occupy Manchester. And during that time, I actually felt like it was becoming a cult under Mark and even actually fought with Katie Talbert about how I refused to be a part of Mark's group. Um, she kept insisting that it was not Mark's group. And I told her, wait, it won't be long before you will all see that Mark thinks Occupy New Hampshire is his. Um, and I left it alone until I saw the petition against an umbrella term for a group of people. Now that to me is almost the same as saying you're gay and I'm against you being gay so you have no part of being here. That is exactly the same exact thing. I will not tolerate it and I'm standing here in solidarity with each and every one of you that believe that we all have the right to a voice. <laughs> and I am here to be uh, a voice of reason when uh, the thing, things first erupted. Uh, that I always gather them towards the voice as a voice of reason. But now I'm being called a traitor. So I take it as a compliment. <laughs> So uh, apparently, if you don't agree with Provost, you're a traitor. So you, you Matt, you're a traitor now too. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> we are. <laughs> Thank you. Has everybody had a chance to? Everybody? Oh, Matt. Um, Matt, Matt wanted, wanted to, I want to be last. last. Um, <laughs> can you allow me some extra time because I have a proposal to make at the end of this? Um, temperature check on giving Matt some extra time. One okay. minute extra is I'd like to, much? yeah, I'd like to, this to be on record because this might be contentious. Hi, um, I'm Matt Richards. Um, I've been involved with Occupy Manchester and Occupy New Hampshire since the beginning. Um, I camped out in Veterans Park for five days. I've got arrested twice, um, once like standing up for the homeless, once trying to break into the Republican primary. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I've been involved in the court case and I've been very um, proud to be fighting with all of you. Um, I, I've, been very, I've been disturbed over the past weeks that 
Um, some people in Occupy have wanted to make this an exclusive group in which people who do not who do not agree with them are not allowed. Um, I've been I've been disturbed by that. I'm glad we're all coming together again because of that. Um, there's been that um, there's been something I've been much more concerned about. However, um, I think. I believe that we should be an entirely inclusive movement. I do not think that because we are an inclusive movement, we need to let abusers and bullies within our movement get away without being held accountable. I do not think we need to be a movement that silences victims from speaking up about crime, about things that have happened to them. I do not think we need to be a, a movement that promotes a culture of silence about abuse. Abuse has been part of the Occupy movement since the beginning. Um, my friend Elizabeth Edwards said she went down to Occupy Wall Street. She talked to some rape victims who said they felt like they they were being silenced because um, because they did people didn't want them to speak up because the police would invade the park. I saw I saw I heard about people being excluded from Occupy Boston for hitting and punching abusing women. Um, I do not think we have gotten to that point as, um, as Occupy New Hampshire that, but I am seeing huge red flags this week and last week, and it has made me very scared about our, our community. And this is very hard for me to say, but I, I had been friends with Mark Provost since like October, and over the past few weeks I've seen him um, making abusive comments towards women, um, bullying people for their gender expression. Um, I've seen him making emotional threats, personal threats, disclosing personal information about people in order to terrorize them and shame them into not opposing him. And I, I, I have huge red flags with him. And I think, I, I, I do not think Mark is an evil person, but I... I think he is an abusive person and he makes me feel unsafe. I think he is unhealthy for the entire community and I want to go on record as saying this. Um, I, I think I, my proposal today is in three parts. Um, we can endorse any or all of them. Um, one is I want, um, I want Mark Provost to not be allowed any of the fun, um, any of our resources or any of our funds as Occupy New Hampshire in the spirit of holding abusers accountable. This has nothing to do with his political orientation or what group he joined or whether he sports guns or free staters. Um, this is about abusive behavior. I think people need to be held accountable for abuser be abusive behavior and I do not think abusers need to have access to our resources. Um, my, the second part of the proposal is I think um, we should release some sort of statement that um, people here have felt abused by him and feel that he's unhealthy for the community. And the third part is um, I think we should exclude him from the decision-making process until everyone feels safe here. And, and that's, those are my three proposals you can discuss. Those are my three items you can discuss them. Thank you. Can I, can I make a, 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 does, does that mean, uh, I get, I'm not sure here, I think maybe the proper thing to do is to take a temperature check and see if people want to add these proposals to the agenda? The agenda? Or, is that that's correct? Correct. So we, um, do we break these down one at a time? We can do them all at one time. Do you want to do them all at one time? Yeah, we can do them all at one time as part of the agenda. agenda. Yeah. At the end of yeah. the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Thank you. so that I don't remember the exact wording, so I'll just add on Matt um, Matt's 